Well, it's Raymond Praise Time again, and I'm so glad you tuned in to be with us today. Hunt, uh, today I'm talking about who you are in Christ. You love to talk about who oh, you well, are in Christ. <laughs> in Christ are the in Him scriptures. Uh, it, you know, it's the reality of what, who we are in yes. Christ Jesus. It says, it, it says there, we are a new person, or one translation, creation, another one says creature, yes. but we are, I like to say, we are a new person in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. That's right. So, and it's important to know who you are in Christ, know your position in Christ, and then because if you know your position and know who you are in Christ, then you have benefits. You know, uh, working for a company, or, or we have about 200 have employees, employees that work right. here at Kinley Ministries and, Rama. and Rama Bible College and Rama Bible uh, Church. Church, Bible Church. Yes. Uh, now, because they're employed here, that's who they are, mm -hmm. they have some privileges. Yes. Because of who we are in Christ, we have privileges, and it talks to us about him right here in, in, what, in what we call the Holy Bible. But you know what, honey? We have to take advantage of those privileges. Oh, yeah. They can be there, but if we don't well, take advantage well, of them. That's where I was going. All right. We give every employee a, a employee manual. That's right. And in it, it tells them everything. Mm -hmm. Now, it tells them that after they work a certain amount of time, They've got vacation days. Yes. I'm not going to go down there and tell them, you got to take vacation. You can't work that tomorrow. You got for sure. No. Hey, that, it, it, I'm, I'm giving it to them. And if they don't take advantage of it, that's, right. that's their problem. Absolutely. And that's what God, Christ did for us. He gave this all to us. He told us what is ours. And he told us the benefits. If we don't take advantage of them, it's our fault, that's not right. his. So why don't we go right now where I'm talking about who you are in Christ. You know, many people want to be somebody and uh, they talk about wanting to be, should be, could be, or might be, or going to be. You ever met somebody like that? They're always talking about what they should do, what they gonna, what they want to do, you know, uh, we need to do it, you know. We need to understand that when we begin to get a hold of who we are in Christ, it will change our whole life. We've been redeemed by Christ, you know. Now I realize we have others here from from other countries, but the majority of us here identify with as being an American citizen, Amen. right? How many identify as American citizen? You see, that you are saying, I am a part of the United States of America. Right. Hello? Amen. You know, it, it's important for us to understand and say who we are in Christ. If you, if you are in a, another country and you, they asked you to identify your nationality, you identify as a U.S. citizen. Is that correct? Or if you're from another country, you identify with that country. Well, we need to identify with in Christ. You know, one of the, uh, William Barclay, who is a, was a, a, a I believe he was a, a Presbyterian minister, I think, or maybe one of the other, anyway, he's from, he's from uh, England or some of the Isles over there. And uh, he, he was a great scholar in the Word of God. And he said this, using this analogy about being in Christ. We cannot live our physical life unless we're in air. 
and the air in us. And we cannot live for Christ, in Christ, unless we are in Christ and Christ is in us. We cannot live the life of God. Unless we're in Christ and Christ in us, we cannot live the life of God. Now, God sees you not who you are, but he sees you who you are in Christ. He looks at you through being redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we just said. Tell them I have been redeemed. Now, I didn't know they was going to sing that, but that's a good song to go with what I'm speaking on. <laughs> you know, Christ took the punishment that we should have taken. Christ was the perfect sacrifice for all of the sins and his blood represented that sin sacrifice. Now, let me give you a little bit. Most of you know this, but let me remind you of it. And if you don't, then, then you, you can learn it. In the Old Testament, they would kill a lamb that was spotless. I mean, it had no blemishes. It was perfect. And then they would take that blood and they would rub it on the head of a goat and they would turn it loose into the wilderness. It was called the escape goat. And then they would take that lamb and they would sacrifice it to the Lord for a sin offering. Their sins were covered for one year. They had to do that every year. But Jesus Christ came and the Lamb of God that became the one and only supreme sacrifice when his blood was shed on Calvary and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty state. It's not, they had, their, their sins were covered. Our sins, we are forgiven. See, in other words, God Looks, is, looks at our humanity through Christ. Burial, death, and resur death, burial, and resurrection. And ascension and seating. Galatians 2.20 says we've been crucified with Christ. Romans 6, 4 and 5 says we're buried with Christ in death. Ephesians 2.6 tells us that we arose with Christ at his resurrection. Ephesians uh, 2 6 also tells us we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. In God's mind and in God's eyes, we, we were all there with Christ during his redemptive work. His death became our death, his burial became our burial, his resurrection became our resurrection. And that is one of the reasons that we have water baptism. It is to symbolize dying and being raised again a new person in Christ Jesus. It, it's, a, it's an outward symbol of something that's already taken place on the inside in the inner man. Let me understand that. Hello? Now, you know, his ascension was our ascension. His seat is our seat. His victory is our victory. His life is our life. His blessings are our blessings. Everything that God gave to Christ has now become a part of us because we have accepted Jesus Christ and become born again. If you happen to be here today and you haven't accepted Christ, you can do that today and stand in the same place that we stand. It doesn't matter how long you've been saved uh, or how short you've been saved or if you just uh, ask Christ into your heart, any, every time you become in Christ, everything he has is yours. Hello. You see, now, just as all men sinned in Adam, so all men escaped sin in Christ. 
Just as all men died in Adam, all men conquered death in Christ. Now, that does not mean the cessation of life. In the Word of God, you need to understand when that word death is used, you need to understand whether it means cessation of life or being dead to Christ, to God. See, it says you were dead in your trespasses and sin, but you were alive, weren't you? So it's talking about spiritual death. When Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden and got kicked out, since he was the mole for mankind, then what happened with him was transferred to us. Now, when I was going to Bible school, I worked at Plastics Manufacturing Company making bowls. Well, one night, you know, you got a quota to make, man. You don't worry about, you don't, you, you, did, you, you, you take that, you put that, you hit that button, that press comes together, it comes apart, you take that, and, and you, you know, that thing, and you get them out and you put them down. They're going to take them to the finish room. They can look at it and see if it's all right or not. I ain't got time because I got to make a quota. If I don't make my quota, the next night when I come in to go to work, I work the midnight shift, and I would get my card and on it and say, you didn't make quota last night. If you don't make it to my night, don't bother to come back. I'm serious. Any, any of y'all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. So, man, I'm busy, and all of a sudden, the foreman come by and said, shut it down, shut it down. I said, what? what? He said, one of the, one of the molds, because I had, I had six bowls up here, three, three, and six down here, and one of them, one of the molds had developed a crack. So every bowl that was made in that mold had, a, had a, a deal in the side of the bowl, had that image of that crack. That, see, we are made in the image of Adam, the man, mankind, all mankind we're talking about. So therefore, what happened to Adam was transferred to all of us. But through Christ, death, burial, and resurrection on the cross, we have been redeemed. It's like, it's like they, change, they changed the mold, so now i got a perfect bowl. See, Jesus became the new mold that our lives is molded after. Therefore, now we're in Christ, and God sees us not as sinners. He sees us as in Christ, completely pure and whole and healthy, standing before him. Amen? In Christ everything that Adam had and lost. See, he lost it. Remember he got kicked out of the garden? Remember that? If you don't know, go read Genesis. And then, then go read in Romans about the second man, Adam, he's called. I don't have time to go the whole, teach the whole thing. I just want to get you thinking about who you are in Christ this morning. And so through, through Christ, everything that Adam lost, remember, he, he, was, he, he was everything. He, he, con he controlled the garden. He had man who was in control, you know, but he didn't even have to work. But because he messed up, God said, you're going to work. Go read it. See, being born again, we are thrust into the new spiritual mold. mold. And therefore, our existence with Christ is who we become. Now, unless you know who you are in Christ, you can't, you can't reap the benefits. Hello. You know, every one of us have a family name. Every one of us has either been, has been, you know, whatever our parents had passes to us. I mean, you, you look at, at, you know, I, everybody said, man, the older you get, the more you look and act and sound like your dad. Anybody out there say that? I've had several of you tell me that. Why? Because 
I'm of him. Right? Cameron, Craig's oldest, and his dad, they look and act so much alike it's unreal. You see, we are in Christ. Now we need to become and do and act and look and act and receive everything that belongs to us because of who we are in Christ. You see, when dad left in 2003, he left me in charge. And so I'm to take care of mom till she goes. And when she goes, he had, I had this, it was all written out. He had it written out instruction with the attorney and all that. Then everything that was left after I took care of her, when she went in 2007, it was my responsibility to transfer whatever, the, whatever they had that was left. Half of it went to me and half of it went to my sister because there's only two of us. He said, I already, I, took, I helped the grandkids and the great-grandkids, and now this, what's left is y'all's. So, why? Because of who I am. I'm going to tell you. Whatever Christ has is yours because you're in Christ. You see, you need to understand that you live in two worlds at the same time, the spiritual world and the natural world. And in the natural world, there are certain things that belong to you because of who you are, American citizen, a, a member of your family. And because of who you are in Christ, there are certain things that belong to you because of that. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, if you don't know who you are in Christ, you can't, you can't take advantage of the benefits. Right? Anybody ever heard of a, of a famous preacher by the name of Charles Spurgeon? He, he lived many years ago in England. One day, Spurgeon was visiting one of the sick elderly members. She lived in a one-room shack. It was so cold in there that she had to stay in bed covered up with blankets up to her neck to even try to stay warm. She was dying of malnutrition. And Spurgeon glanced around the room and he noticed a document on a frame in the, on the wall and he asked the woman about it and she told him it was an appreciation letter from the English noblewoman that she had worked for for nearly half a century. The aged woman could not read so Spurgeon asked if he could take the letter to the to a lawyer whose name was on the document to have him look at the letter. When he took it to the lawyer, the lawyer said he had been looking for the document. It was part of the last will and testament of the lady the woman had worked for. She had bequeathed to the woman a beautiful house and a monthly allowance. This sickly poverty struck woman could have been living in luxury if she had known what the document said. It's the same with us. We got to know what the document says about being in Christ. When we get a hold of what the document, the Word of God says about being in Christ, we don't no longer have to live in, in poverty, live in want, live in wishing. See, you know, I want you to realize that our daily living the devil will try to challenge you and tell you, nah, that doesn't belong to you. That was just for the Jews, the Israelites. But wait, we got to come back to Galatians 3. And it said, if, if you be Christ, then you're part of the Abraham seed. Doesn't it? It, then it talks about us being, we might call it this way, and in the Word of God, we'll say it here in a minute. We've been adopted into the family of God. Now, if you do a little study, you'll find out that an adopted son 
has as much right as a natural son. Study that. Has as much right to all the inheritance. Hey, we have a right to all of the inheritance that God provided for us through Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. Now, the enemy will bring up your past. He'll bring up everything that he can think of and some things he can't think of to tell you that this can't happen for you, that you're unworthy, that you're an unworthy creature. God never created any unworthy creatures or creation. You know, sometimes... We need to realize that our circumstances do not reflect who we are or what we have in Christ. We can overcome those. But we have to choose to believe what the Word of God says. It says, and we're going to go back to it now. I'm going to reiterate some of this. We are crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20. If you don't have it there, turn to it. Mark it in your Bible. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Some people are like, oh, I need to die to sin. What do you need to die to sin for? You've already been crucified with Christ. Your sin was crucified with him. We, ha- we have a new existence in Christ. Come on. We're a new creation in Christ. Turn to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You probably have some of these scriptures marked. Some of you may not. Some of you may say, I've heard this before. Well, you need to hear it again. We need to continually be stirred up about who we are in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The Amplified Version says, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is now a new creature altogether, a new creation, engrafted. And the Word of God says that we have been engrafted. Have you ever... You know, you, you might not have, have known about it, but you can take and engraft a limb on a tree. And they, they make a little cut, and then you got the proper cut from the other limb, and you put it there, and then you bind it and bind it. And it become, then it begins to grow, and it becomes engrafted to that tree, although it was not originally part of that tree. How many of y'all know about that? How many of y'all have seen that? That happens. See, I want you to notice as we read this 2 Corinthians 5, 17 in both these versions, New King James and Amplified, it doesn't say we should be, want to be, or trying to be a new creation in Christ. It says we are. I want you to get a hold of who you are in Christ so you can take it, the ben, get all the benefits have, that belong to you. And actually, we got a fantastic uh, offer. That's this is right. the last week for it. It's the last and week for it. And it. It, is, it is my book, Because of Jesus, or no, book. I got a book on it, but these are the CDs. Three CDs. Three CDs, Because of Jesus. Yes. And then Dad's book, Knowing What Belongs to You. Very good mini book. And then... His CD set, two of them, in him, talking about in Christ. What we have in Christ, who we are in Christ, what we can do in Christ. It's an incredible offer, and you need to go right now, get on that computer, and order it because you're going to save $13. That's it's right. normally $36.95. We didn't go for $23.95, yeah. and this is the last time. Now, uh, you can go on our online bookstore at rhema.org. But you're going to pay full price. But you're going to pay full yeah. price. So this is the last week to get this special. Go get it right now, okay? And besides that, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> but and besides that, next Sunday, guess what's going to happen here? Rockets over, Rayma. Rockets Boom. over, Rayma. That's right. I love fireworks. Uh, that is Sunday, July the 2nd here yeah. on the Rayma campus. Uh, we start with um, a indoor musical. It's called right. Let Freedom Ring. Right. And then we go outside and we get to eat food because yeah, hamburgers, hot dogs, yes, funnel uh, cakes, funnel cakes uh, ice cream, uh, snow cones. That's right. All kinds of stuff. The kids can enjoy inflatables. That's free. Right. It's free. Uh, then we have a car show. Oh yeah. And your dad's. 1976 Cadillac will yeah. be Fleetwood Brougham. It's got a, it, it's original. Like it was right. 52,000 original miles. Mm -hmm. And then your your little T Bird will be there. And then my hot rod that I got for sale. If it don't sell, it'll That's be there. Right. I've won three car shows with it. Our grandson he races his race cars be with, with some other. Yeah. There's an uh, there's some other people in the church that race yeah, well, and their cars be. Michael Tyree will probably have his car there and some of the other race right. cars. And then there'll be there's more Motorcycles and all and a concert outside. Oh, the concert yes. outside. Uh, that's to, and that's the icing. And that, about ten o'clock. That's the dessert. Uh, the concert the with concert, all the three yes. bands and our bands and people. But then the icing on the cake is about the dark thirty, just yes. as it starts to get dark. Between twenty-five and thirty minutes yes. of fireworks. And I will tell you what, every one of those fireworks, it feels like it. It is looks the like grand a finale. finale. Everybody yes. thinks it's the grand finale. It just yes. keeps going on and on. You want to be there, okay? That's right. Well, we're going to get out of here today. Thank you for being with us on Rainbow Praise. Thank you for helping us to bring hope, help, and healing to the world. Some of you will say, this is my anniversary. I got saved at such and such time. Well, as far as God was concerned, you were saved and born again the minute Jesus Christ died and rose again. The minute he shed his blood, the minute he became the sacrifice, as far as God is concerned. Because of Jesus, Kenneth W. Hagen helps you discover how to enjoy what rightfully belongs to you. Plus the mini book, Knowing What Belongs to Us by Kenneth E. Hagen, explaining what is ours through the redemptive work of Jesus. There are close to 130 of the expressions throughout the epistles which do tell you something that you have because you're in Him, in whom, and in Christ. And the powerful CD series, In Him by Kenneth E. Hagen. The CDs and the mini book can be yours for only $23.95. So don't wait. Call toll free right now, 888 Praise 8, or you can log on anytime, day or night, at rhema.org to order. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.